Welcome back to episode three in this series of building a Flutterflow plus a Superbase application. This is a super important video in this particular series because primarily we are gonna focus on Superbase. We're gonna start creating our tables. We're gonna start looking at row level security. We're gonna be creating policies to ensure that we enforce rules that stop users from manipulating or retrieving data they're not allowed to retrieve. So that's really important. And we're also gonna look at how Flutterflow passes a token to Superbase in order for us to make those particular checks. So lots of interesting stuff with inside this video and it will set us up quite nicely then in the next video to start then building out the pages that will then authenticate against Superbase. So uh, hope you, hopefully you're sitting comfortably. So let's get cracking. So here we are then on the home page of my dashboard for Superbase. As you can see, I've got one project already created called Goals. If you just created your uh, Superbase account, then you'll have no uh, projects on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a brand new project now. So I'm gonna hit new project and click on the organization, which is mine is called the Digital Pro. So I'm just gonna put my name down here and I'm gonna call this project My Goals and database password. I'm just gonna sort of generate a, a new password here. So just, you, you don't need to, make a copy of it but um sure put that into a notepad somewhere so you've got that somewhere safe i'm going to choose my region as the west eu uh, i'm going to keep it on the free pricing plan i don't need anything more than that and hit create project so this will take just a couple of minutes to provision your database and get it up and running so just leave that to do its thing and we'll be right back so our project has just been created. As you can see, this is the homepage. You're likely to see something very similar to this. Now we are gonna create two tables with inside our project. Now the tables are gonna hold our data. So if you're not too familiar with databases, we've got two tables in this project. One is called goals and one is called tasks. And they're both gonna contain different sets of data, but we're gonna link the two together and I'll show you how that's done very, very shortly. So let's first up start with by creating the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring up a couple of slides, which is gonna give you an indication of what the contents of those tables will look like. So this slide is showing you our goals table that we're gonna be creating very, very shortly. It's gonna be used to hold all of the goals data within inside our application. On the left-hand side, you can see the columns that we're gonna be creating very, very shortly. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. I'm gonna show you kind of how they all kind of operate and link together very, very soon. On the right-hand side slightly, we've got the type of the column that we're gonna be creating as well. Plenty of text-based columns in there as well. There are other data types available. I selected text for this particular project. But if you were looking to constrain perhaps the data within inside your, your table, you might choose a varchar, for example, where you can actually give it a predefined set uh, constraints such as like 100 characters, 150 characters. But I've just used text on this particular occasion. There's also int2 in there as well, which is like a small range number that we're going to be containing in that particular database column. And also as well, there's some default values there as well. So we, you'll see how they are defined very, very shortly when we do that with inside the, the, the creation of the actual database table. There's one more table I need to make you aware of, and that is tasks. Now, of course, with each goal, there's gonna be tasks associated with the goal. So I'm gonna show you how that kind of links up a little bit later. But generally, you can see here, we've got um, a smaller number of columns in this particular table with some uh, some simple sort of data types there as well. So again, I'll show you how that gets gets set up very, very soon. So that so that you please use these slides as a reference reference point into creating those tables just to make sure you've got everything set up correctly but I'll quickly get those set up very very shortly. So let's now commence creating our goals table so just move over to the left hand side and click on database uh, tables is already selected and then just hit new table up at the top right. So my table is going to be called goals and I'm going to turn off a row level security just for the moment we will come back to that so just turn that off. Let's clear the warning just hit confirm um, and then down here this is where all our columns are going to be created for our database so leave the first two as they are we don't need to change those let's hit on add column and I'm going to type one in here called title and the type that's going to be for this column if you remember is going to be called text and that's all that we need to do so I'm now going to carry on creating all of the columns as per the previous slide and we'll come back and check it in just a moment 
Okay, so I've added all of the columns to this particular table. You can see there that's pretty well much as the slides that we had earlier on. The only difference, of course, is with inside the default value, I'll just put zero down there because that is the default value that we're going to be including. And I've just also made sure as well on the actual cog here that we actually take the little checkbox off is nullable. And you can see the difference here between this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's what I've taken off. We want to make sure that we're pretty clear that that particular field is not going to contain a null value basically nothing at all so we know we're going to set some values in there so that's pretty well much our table setup so hopefully I can just hit the save now and our table will get created so let's now create the task table so just hit new table here type in tasks and let's turn off the row level security just for a moment hit confirm and I'm just going to go through now and start creating the additional columns that we had in this particular table so we'll come back and check that in just a moment so now all of the fields are now created for our task table. You can see that's pretty well much as we expect it to be. Um, if you just follow along and just key those in as well. You can see the only change that I've made here is just on this little cog here. I've just made sure that is nullable is unchecked and just make sure that you've got the default value of false in there as well. So that's pretty well much our tasks table set up. So let's hit the save option. Let's just make sure that that table actually saves okay. Of course, if you've made any errors, it will come up and actually give you an indication of what the error will be. You can just go in and then change it and then hit save and hopefully you'll be presented with what you see now. So both of our tables are now created. So now that our tables are now created, let me introduce you to the world of policies. Now, this is going to be a step we're going to introduce, which is going to move us towards enabling row level security within inside our super base. Uh, project. Now, the key thing here is that um, what policies are going to do for us in this instance is that when a user is authenticated with inside our application, so they're signed in and they are exchanging uh, sort of requests back to the Superbase platform, we're going to want to put some controls in place that's going to check to see if the user that is making that request, whether they're updating data, whether they're pulling data in, we're going to want to check to make sure that that user is who they say they are. Okay, that's really important. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create some policies that's going to enforce those measures within inside the database. So let's walk through that now. So let's move over to the authentication option here on the left hand side. And you can see here that we've got an option called policies on the left hand side. Just select that. And you can see now that we're going to get these warnings about that we haven't got row level security enabled. Don't worry about that. We'll do that very, very shortly. But let's now start thinking about our policies. So we're going to want to apply some restrictions on our goals and our task table. We're going to want to make sure that any operation that is taking place with inside those tables, the user who is making those uh, those requests are who they say they are. OK, so that that's important. So, for example, if you have data that is associated to a particular user and the user is requesting that data back or they're making changes to that data, we're going to want to check to make sure that they are who they say they are. And the way that we do that is we introduce some policies. So just move up to the right hand side here with against the goals table, hit new policy and there's this option where we can use some templates or we can do a full customization now we're just going to do a full customization here the templates that's actually part of this uh, this kind of this window aren't what we're looking for so we're going to create a brand new one and i'll talk you through how that particularly this this particular section works so we need to put a policy name in so we'll do that in just a moment you can see here that we've got these allowed operations select insert update and delete now these are just traditional um uh, sort of operations that you can uh, you can do on on the database um so selecting is obviously when we're just trying to select and retrieve data insert obviously is for inserting data and updating is updating data and deleting is deleting data so it's quite self-explanatory so what we need Need to do is we now need to put controls in against all of those operations okay so we're not going to select them individually we're just going to choose all here and then in this particular area here we now need to apply some expressions in here so we're going to need to check for something okay so the way this works is that when our application makes a request into Superbase, we're going to be passing over a token now this happens behind the scenes in Flutterflow, okay? So this token will be exchanged between the Flutterflow application and Superbase. We now need to take that token, we need to check inside it, we need to pull out a value, which is gonna be our user ID in this instance. So we need to check to see if that user is allowed to perform these actual requests, okay? So there's a couple of things that we can do, but there's a very, very simple technique within inside uh, Superbase that allows us to check this. And it's actually got some helper 
functions that support it. So what does this token actually look like? Well, let's have a look at the Flutterflow application here. Now, this is the live version that we that we had in the, one of the earlier videos for preview. And what I've done is I've just logged in, okay, and I'm just looking at some of the requests that are taking place back and forth. And you can see here that that's, um, there's a request that was made to actually pull in all of the goals information within to the application. And you can see here in the header, there's this authorization token that is being exchanged between the Flutterflow application and Superbase. You can see here that I've just shown you here is authorization. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this token here. I'm just going to copy it. We don't need the bearer bit. We just need all of this, this data here. I'm just going to make a copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to a really, really helpful website called JWT.io, which is going to allow us to almost basically decipher um, or decode that particular um, kind of token. And we can see the contents of it. Okay, so there's nothing that's pretty that's, that's not insecure here. So that this is pretty an open token. But what it's actually showing you is this particular data. Now this is kind of decoded, and this is what the actual token contains. And you can see here there's some different bits. It's got my email address in there, but there's nothing particularly too sensitive. And um, we've got some session information and all that kind of stuff. But what's really really important is this particular one here because this is the user ID of the user who's actually authenticated with inside the application. So what we can do is we can actually store that value as uh, as some data with inside our database tables. If you remember when we actually created those database tables, we created one called uh, a column called user ID. So what we can do is we can associate that value to the user ID and then when the request then comes in, we can use some uh, support and functions with inside Superbase that actually allows us to check to see does that value there match the value with inside the database. And if it does, then it returns true. If it doesn't, it returns false. So that's what we're going to do here. So just keep an eye on here. This is the sub. OK, so we're going to be pulling this value out of the token and then we're going to be able to perform that particular check. So going back into Superbase then, we can we can put an expression in here which allows us to do that check. Okay, so let me put that expression in now for you. So the expression has now been loaded. Okay, I've just put a policy name at the top there. Okay, but just would it describe exactly what it's doing. But you can see here that the using expression has been added. So I've got all selected here. That's really important. And then here, what we're doing is this particular command here is 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 kind of something that Superbase actually understands. So off is something it knows itself. It is dot jwt, and it's pulling out a sub here, which we know is of type text, and it's checking it against the user ID. So this is the column that's within inside the table that we created earlier on. Of course, the task table also contains exactly the same thing. So really, we're just basically checking to see um, the the sub value is matching the user ID, which we know if it does, it's going to return true back. OK, so that, that that's super important, because if that's true, it means that the operation that we're looking to do will be successful. OK, so we now need to put this actually in the bottom expression as well. And so this bottom expression, is used for doing inserts and updates. Of course, you could actually write some uh, some expressions in here. It could be checking other things. So, for example, there might be maybe a value within inside your database. You can actually say, you know, so let's say an age, for example, somebody who is over the age of 18 or under the age of 18, you could actually check on the server to see, okay, is that person over the age of 18, which if they are, then you can then make the change to the, uh, to the database. Or if they're not, then obviously it doesn't make that change at all. So there's some control that you can put in place if that data was available to you. But in our instance, this is really simple, is that we're just checking the contents of the token that's, that's available to us and checking to make sure that they match. So that's pretty well much all that we need to do. So I'm just going to keep this in my clipboard because we're going to apply exactly the same thing as well to the task table. So let's just hit review and this should be successful for us. So don't worry too much about this. It's just pretty much giving you the statement that it's going to run to set everything up for us. Hit save policy and that should all be set up for us. So you can see it says policy successfully says saved. So we now just can do the same thing now to the task table. So just hit new policy up here, click on this one here, and I'm just going to select all, and I'm just going to paste that into there. And I'm just gonna give it the policy name as well. So enable all actions for users based on their user ID. So again, that's exactly the same. We can just hit review and hit save and those policies will be will be created for us. So we know that now when we now activate row level security, we know that we've got those controls in place at this particular stage. 
So before we enable row level security within inside our database, there's a couple of extra little bits that we just need to do, um, or that we can do this at any particular time, but I'm gonna do that at this point. So the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to want to associate our tasks with our goals, okay? So we're gonna to want to define a relationship between the two tables. And the way that we do that is we just go into the task table. So just hit the little pen here. Um, just make sure you're, you're actually on the database and you're on the table section. Just hit the little pen here. And you can see this is the, the view that you saw previously. But one thing we didn't set up earlier is this little bit here, which is this particular uh, sort of association of a foreign key to create this relation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the little, little uh, sort of like uh, link there. And we're just going to choose the table that it reference to, which is going to be the goals. Um, ID is going to be the ID of the goal. So what's going to happen is that every task that we create will have the ID of the goal. OK, so that's how the two tables are going to be associated. OK, so what we can also do here, though, is that um, is this particular option here, which is quite important, actually, is that um, we don't want to leave any uh, sort of task redundant within our table, okay? Or we don't want to have any issues where we have constraints where we're trying to delete something, but actually we're going to leave something as an orphan or it's just going to kind of exist on its own or it's going to cause us some, some issues with constraints. So what we need to we need to say actually is that if we actually delete our goal, then we're going to actually going to want to delete all of our tasks as well. We don't want to have to do a follow-up operation of any reason to delete our tasks or, or delete our task first and then delete our goal. Okay, so whenever we we delete a goal we want to delete our tasks and the way that we do that is we set this particular option here of cascade okay so cascade will mean that when we delete that record then it will cascade down to the task and delete those as well okay so just hit save and then that relationship should all be set up for us now so if we hit save hopefully fingers crossed we'll get an update and we'll get that successfully updated okay so that means our tables are now set up from that regard i think we can go on now when we can enable row level security so let's just click on the goals up here let's enable row level security and then hit save and that should be good for us and then move on the pen there as well and let's do that as well so we've now got everything created for row level security so excellent everything is all in place so there's some further steps that we now need to do in our database just to get us ready for the next video where we're going to end up getting the ui linked up to the superbase database so within inside the uh the actual uh, uh, sort of authentication area there if i get the right place we also need to choose the providers option so within inside our application and the only thing that at this time of recording that's the flutterflow supports is is email um, as a provider okay so we can't use Facebook or any other sort of social media or anything like that but in order for that to be nice and smooth and run nicely for us we just want to choose uh, email um, up the top there as a provider and let's take that off there for secure email and take that one off as well confirm email that's all that we need to do just make sure you hit the save option there and that's successfully updated for us so there we go thank you for watching everybody hope you found that really really useful um it took a little bit longer than i expected with inside the super base world but of course to get everything set up but rest assured in the next video we'll start then plugging our app into super base to start getting all of the authentication stuff working and we will be coming back to super base again because we're going to be adding some superpowers into our flutterflow application with extending super base even further on the server side so please do look out for that video um, in the not too distant future so of course as always please do like the video i really do appreciate your likes it really gets the message of the videos and the channel out to the wider community and of course if you love learning um, flood of flow and of course anything else that i cover on my channel then please do subscribe as well so uh, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video